Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Facebook Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine. Today, we're going to talk about a pretty controversial subject. So I want to first state <laughs> very clearly and for the record, I am not a nutritionist. I am not telling you how you should think or what you should do. But I get this question a lot. And the question is, Jeff, you're in great shape. You're amazing for your age. You know, you're a bodybuilding champion, uh, fitness champion, physique champion. Uh, you did the first vegan bodybuilding championship in the world. You hang out with cool um, uh, vegan bodybuilders like Corinne Sutton and, and, uh, uh, and Monk. You know, these guys are winning shows. How do they do it? What is your macro split? So let's let's get into that so <laughs> it's it's a funny question because there for me there is no right answer uh the right answer is what is the macro split that's right for you and now there's tons of people online uh all the bro science and all the even well-intentioned people saying this is the macro split i use but you know you've got to think about what all is going into that macro split. And to, to get started, I, I want to share a video uh, link that you can watch later or anytime. Uh, but I think Danny Taylor, who um, is one of the co-founders along with uh, Giacomo um, of Vegan Proteins and uh, 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 Plant Oh God, I'm blanking. Anyway, she's amazing. She put it together, very simple, very short video on why percentage-based macros don't make a whole lot of sense. So um, I am going to go ahead and post that in the comments section. Uh, do check it out. Short video explains it very clearly why percentage-based macro splits. Now, okay, so let's first clarify what are macros. Macros is short for macronutrients. So macronutrients, and there is four. And that's one of the problems I have. Most people judge macros as protein, fats, and carbs. Three macros. I say there's fiber, which is the fourth. So what is a macronutrient? Macro, meaning large, is the first. A micro, meaning small. A macronutrient is something that our bodies need in larger amounts of quantities. So like B12, we only need an infinitesimal little amount. So it's a micronutrient, a nutrient we only need in very small amounts. Whereas protein, fiber, carbs, all require larger amounts, multiple grams of amounts in order to meet both our nutritional needs for health, our survival needs, but also performance needs, and all of these change. So let's jump into why macros uh, are good and why not so good. <laughs> um, first, it, look, if you are competing, if you are out there uh, getting ready for a show, that's a whole different level. I understand. I've used macros for my training uh, to get myself into the optimal shape. But once you've done it a couple of times, I, I stopped actually even looking at my macronutrient splits. I stopped even caring. What I did is look and say, okay, I'm getting a good source of proteins in, in each one of my meals. I'm getting a good source of healthy fats in each one of my meals. I'm getting a good source of fiber in each one of my meals. And, and when I looked at it on a balance level, you know, Here's a funny thing I've always thought about. What is your macro split? Okay, so you look at the foods we eat and you look at the macro split for say a hamburger, real high in fat, real high in protein, real low in carbohydrates, right? And then you look at foods, <laughs> dare I say, we should eat, and there's really low in, 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 in or lower in fats, uh, lower in protein and higher in carbohydrates but they have all the micronutrients, they have all the phytoproteins, they have all the fiber in them. The meat products, the dairy, the eggs, zero fiber, zero phytonutrients, hardly any polyphenols, very few antioxidants. So they're micronutrient poor and macronutrient rich on two out of the, the four macronutrients. One, they don't even have any, no fiber at all in any animal product. So it's completely missing a macronutrient of the four macronutrients, fats, protein, carbs, fiber. So why are those so important? 
Well, let, let, I, I was researching uh, the gorilla diet, the West African gorilla diet. You can look it up. Just type in West African gorilla diet and look at and, and macros, something like that in Google. And, and at first glance, it says, OK, so they're eating 80 to 90 percent greens, right? Well, greens by weight, when you take out the water, are really high in fiber, really high in polyphenols, really high in protein as a percentage, and then low or almost no fats and very low carbohydrate. And you're like, how can they survive on that? Well, when you look at how that fiber goes into their system and their body breaks down the fiber and forms short chain fatty acids, then those fats then get used for calories. Now, when you look at actual calories that their body is getting from the foods they're eating, it's about 60% of their calories come from fats. If you look at the food they're eating, right, the greens, you'd say there's no fat in there. When you look at how that food is processed in their digestive tract, it's 60% of the calories are coming from fats. So what, you know, if you're basing your macros on greens, you're not getting any fats. If you're great basing your macros on what is actually digested, absorbed, and utilized for energy and nutrition, you're getting 60% of your calories from fats. Same food, different way the body processes it. So looking at fat uh, food on the outside and judging it for its macronutrient content instead of how it actually gets processed by our microbiome, our gut bacteria, how it gets utilized, how it gets absorbed, how the body, once it takes it in, along with the phytonutrients and polyphenols, process that and utilize that completely different story. So if you, you know, for me to tell you what the right macro split for you is, is like you know, I picture I picture uh, a bunch of old folks sitting in a nursing home, and they all have their own different drugs for their own different disease states, and then pulling out the drugs and saying, "Oh, my drug split is one of these, two of these, four of these, and three of these." What is your drug split? Oh, you have a different drug split than I do. Maybe I should be doing your drug split. No, their drug split's perfect for them for their disease states, for their health conditions, not for you. Nobody else's macro split is going to be good for you unless it just happens to be by happenstance or chance. So, okay. So then if we don't really know what it is based on percentage of your diet is not accurate either. And even way the food is processed and used in the diet can just totally whack out macros. So why are we even looking at macros at this point? Well, you do need minimum requirements. You do need a minimum for survival of essential fatty acids. You do need a minimum for survival of essential amino acids. That's why they're called essential. We have to get them from our diet. You need a minimum requirement of fiber, dietary fiber, both soluble and insoluble. So these are things that we need to survive. Now, there are most of the recommendations for these are based on survival. And they're based on averages. Now, what if you're a six foot five guy weighing 300 pounds and that's a healthy body weight for you? Well, <laughs> that's something very different. Your nutrient intake is going to be way different than mine. What if, like when I was a swimmer in high school and college, I was consuming over 6,000 calories a day. I weighed 145 pounds and I was about six to 7% body fat on 6,000 calories a day. Because I was swimming and training with such intensity, because I was a competitive athlete, I was burning a huge amount of calorie load. Now, I do less than half of that calories, and I weigh 195 now and carry much more muscle. And I didn't even, couldn't even add muscle at. The exercise was different, the calorie needs were different, the nutritional needs were different, same body. It's so, you know, when you say, what is your, what is your macro split? Well, my macro split is different every single day because I have different activity every day. When I'm doing a heavy uh, set of heavy weights and I'm training legs or, or doing compounds, oh my God, I'm going to use a lot more. I'm going to up my calorie load. I'm going to up my fat intake. I'm going to up my protein intake. 
if I'm doing lightweight training or endurance type of training, I'm going to up my carb intake. I'm going to up, you know, my fat intakes because that and lower my protein intake because endurance training doesn't require as much protein intake. So very different styles of training, exact same body. As I age, I need more protein. And that's been borne out in the research. This is not just bro science. You can ask any, even, even, even the most skeptical plant-based doctors who are uh, dissing protein like it's the evil uh, gift of Satan. <laughs> Protein's not bad. It's where you get that protein from, whether animal or plant source, um, and, and how much the protein and the quality of the protein. Is it in a whole food state? Uh, is it surrounded by great carbs and uh, other micronutrients and good sources of prebiotic fiber? And is it full of enzymes, raw enzymes? All of those things make a difference. Is your food cooked? <laughs> is it processed? Is, does it have things removed from it? All of those things matter. So how can you make sense out of all that? <laughs> Let's just make it real easy. That's why I personally use biofeedback. I give my body certain foods and I listen to it, deep listening. I listen to what, how my body responds to that food. Does my tummy blow up? Probably not a good idea then. Am I getting more inflation, uh, inflammation? Do I look puffy in the mirror on the next day? Is that too high of sodium? Is I got bags under my eyes or dark circles? That's usually an indicator of sodium, too much sodium intake. Is my skin looking vibrant or not? That can be a difference too, because your body, when it gets toxic, one of its clear ways to eliminate toxins from the body is through the skin, the largest organ in our body. So we breathe out toxins all the time. So Doing some good cardio where you're breathing really heavy, that's exchanging and expelling a lot of toxins. That's awesome. If you're not doing that, if you're training just weights for hypertrophy, then you should probably increase your fluid intake. So you got to adjust these for every style of workout you do. But listening to your body is the way you can do this without trying to study a whole encyclopedia's worth of information and figure this out on a spreadsheet. That just doesn't make sense. It's entirely too much work and it's mostly guesswork. So list, learning to listen to your body. How do you feel? So let's let's talk about that. Um, before we get started, I know uh, half of this title was on macros. The other half was on calories. So how many calories? That's the other thing is, oh, what's your calorie intake for the day? Well, I adjust my calorie intake based on my activity level and my intensity level and my nutrition density level. Okay, so activity level is how much actually work or calorie output you're doing. If you're doing a high intense training with a lot of calorie output, then it's just lots of com compound motions, like playing really intense game of basketball. That's moving everything in your body, swimming, really intense, using almost every muscle in your body. So you're burning a lot more calories. Higher carb intake, higher fat, which fat has almost two and a half times the amount of calories of carbs or protein. So we want to make sure that goes up there because that will give you all that extra energy that your body's using. If you have low energy use, but real intense training, more uh, healthy fats, more higher proteins, and then make that calorie load appropriate to what you're doing. Like I was doing two meals a day for a while, just uh, using low calorie because that I wasn't training with such intensity during COVID. I was training just to stay in shape. Now that I'm back in the gym and training really hard with really intensity, now I'm doing the four to five meals a day because that's what my body needs. Now, here's something interesting that I hear from people all the time, which is, hey, Jeff, I'm doing the exact same thing I've always done. I'm eating the exact same calories I've always done, and I'm gaining weight. Well, of course you are. You're aging. <laughs> that happens when we age. What we do is we, we think that when we... Um, as we age, our hormone levels change, our thyroid levels change, our metabolisms levels change, but we don't change our diet? What? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense at all. You have to adjust your diet as you age. You adjust your diet with your workouts, you adjust your diet with your age, you adjust your diet based on your gender, based on your activity level, based on your stress levels. 
all of those things matter. Um, so Raymond asked a question, what do you think of freshly made vegetable juices? Awesome. The only thing I, um, I prefer smoothies, which is using the whole fruit inclusive of the fiber, whereas juicing removes the fiber. You can simply take some of the bulk fiber and put it back into your drink to make it more like a whole food. Uh, that fiber is important. Once you're drinking those juices with all the fiber removed out of it, uh, those sugars can go right into your bloodstream and spike your sugar. So, and again, if you're doing this right after a heavy intense intensive workout where you've earned that sugar uh, from the from the whole foods, then that's a different story. Like prior to my workout, I'll do a smoothie with lots of berries in it. They're low glycemic. They don't affect blood sugar. Actually, they can actually help lower blood sugar, like blueberries, uh, because they're so rich in fiber and pectins and polyphenols. These affect the way your body uses those calories. So it's not the amount of calories, it's how those calories are packaged, how they're utilized. And if there are polyphenols in there, uh, then they'll actually do that. There's an interesting uh, polyphenol called fluoridzin in, in apples. Apples, you know, people say, oh, they're loaded with sugar, but they're also loaded with fiber. And in the skin, don't peel your apples because in the skin there's a really cool polyphenol called fluoridzin. Fluoridzin is so excellent at modulating sugar use. Regulate helps your body regulate that sugar use so it doesn't store as fat. So you can actually lose weight by consuming fiber. Now if you took all the sugar out of this apple and consume the sugar by itself, that'll go straight to fat storage. But with all this fiber and with these polyphenols, this fluoridzin, this fluoridzin in here is so effective, it actually protects against damage that sugar could do in the bloodstream, uh, AGEs. Um, these are uh, gly uh, glycating end products. These are damaging to arteries, to things like this. This is what causes some of the damage to arteries, to the eyes and causes blindness and diabetes or, or to the feet and legs. So you want these whole skins, the whole foods, all the fiber intact. They actually now are taking fluoridzin this, the, the, what's in this apple and using it for a diabetic drug. <laughs> Look it up. It's, it's P-H-L-O-R-I-Z-D-I-N. It's amazing. So, you know, some of our dr best drugs uh, for disease days <laughs> is simply coming right from nature. And when we learn about these whole foods, their nutrients and what they can do in the body, then you are actually beginning to listen to what your body needs. And nature already has them prepackaged in the right macro split, so you don't have to think about that, in the right way so that those calories can be properly used by the body, not isolated nutrients. That's why I did a whole food protein. When you isolate that protein, it behaves entirely different in your body. When you have polyphenols. So when I do my breakfast smoothie in the morning, I do... Uh, blueberries, cherries, strawberries loaded with physetin. That's another one. F-I-S-E-T-I-N. Wonderful polyphenol. Take a look at that. The blueberries, everybody knows about those polyphenols. Amazing for brain health too. Um, but also uh, cherries, which are great for muscle recovery. So these are all low glycemic. They don't stimulate blood sugar, but they load the body with polyphenols. Now I've got a real rich polyphenol. And then of course I do the clean green protein. 69 milligrams of polyphenol polyphenols in a single scoop. It is one of the most polyphenol rich greens out available as a food source. You combine that with polyphenol rich berries and cherries. Oh my God. Now you've got a polyphenol rich going into your body, protecting the cells from damage that you would do from your workout and helping your body utilize, convert fat into usable energy and feed that muscle. Um, so great polyphenols. Grapes are great in that too as well. Then post-workout, I do the oatmeal, which is high in the fiber, high in, in carbohydrates, bananas. Now, here's an interesting thing. So you say, okay, I looked up bananas and it has, oh, a ton of sugar in it. Da, 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 da. You do green banana like this one. Green bananas have uh, resistant starch in them. 
So the exact same banana, if you looked it up on the internet, it'll tell you don't eat that full of sugars. When you're doing green bananas, resistant starches, that actually acts as a prebiotic and can actually lower your body fat, help your body reduce body fat, even with all those sugars in it. That's amazing. So a banana is not just a banana. Depends on how ripe it is. The riper it is, when you start to see the speckles on it, that's more of the starches converting to sugars, simple sugars. Now that can be good after a really intense workout, especially if you work in big body parts like back or legs. Then getting some of that glucose back into the bloodstream where your mu muscle and bodies can use it right up and right away, that will be a great resource to refuel and re-stimulate growth in the muscles. So a banana is not just a banana. An apple is not just an apple. But now when you take that apple and make juice out of it, it's sugar water. There's nothing good about it. So eating those whole foods pre and post workout can make a huge difference. It's more about what's in the macros, what's tied, what comes with the macronutrients, which is all those micronutrients, polyphenols, antioxidants, all these rich different chemicals that the plants give that help us with, uh, yes, cold potatoes, uh, Robbie said, uh, resistant starch. Um, there's just a great study that just came out last week on resistant starch from potatoes. They showed it raised your bifido bacteria, which is one of the most common bacteria in our gut, healthy bacteria, probiotics, right? increased it four to five times with just a few grams, eight grams of, of, of uh, resistant starch from potatoes. Having a nice baked potato after your workout, give it about an hour so your body can, uh, calms down and you're able to digest that, let that blood flow back to your stomach. But yes, these are amazing ways to feed and boost your prebiotics. Uh, uh, by increasing your probiotics, which then increase the production of butyrates and butyrates go into the bloodstream and reduce the inflammation from your workouts. What a great process of doing this, but without looking at the whole food as itself. So how do we get, how do we get in touch with biofeedback consumption and get away from tracking calories as calories in, calories out? That's not how it works. The body treats every single different calorie based on how it's packaged differently. And a calorie is not a calorie. A calorie from uh, an apple is very different from a calorie from a teaspoon of sugar. Way different, way different the way the body processes it, way different in the inflammation, way different in its storage of fat or the utilization of the muscle tissue, not the same. A calorie is not a calorie. A calorie is dependent on all of the rest of the chemicals that are in there, all the fiber, all the other macronutrients that are in there. That's the important part. So instead of trying to figure out all that stuff and put it all on paper, all oh, this has this amount of fiber, this has this much polyphenols, Let's just look at what we should be including more of and what we should be including less of in our diets, and you're going to get better results. And then as you start seeing the results from this and your body starts to adjust to good, healthy eating, nutrient-rich foods, instead of just worrying about the, this amount of protein, this amount of fat, instead focus on the healthy ones the essential fatty acids the essential amino acids and and you can do that by finding out what are the good foods that fit in there and then just make this the basis of your everyday diet and then adjust the total amount of food you're intaking based on your activity level your stress levels your stuff like that so what are a couple of things to listen listen to first learn to listen to your body Wake up every morning, look in the mirror, and see how your body responded to yesterday's food intake. Do you look puffy? Do you look swollen? Do you look wrinkled? Do you look tired? Do you feel tired? Do you feel well rested? Do you feel energized? Do you feel like you got up in the morning, you're ready to go? Or do you feel like I um, can't wait till my cup of tea or coffee? That's based on how your body processed the food you, you consumed before. Keeping a food diary can be very helpful. Um, notice your skin quality. Is your skin dry? Is it crackly? Is it, is it oily? Is it greasy? 
these are all indicators of how much you're pushing out your body because of toxin levels. Um, how much essential fats are going into your body and being utilized. Our skin in particular needs a good balance of both proteins um, because elastin and collagen are essential for our skin health, um, but also enzymes. Um, enzyme rich foods, berries, dark greens, uh, grains, whole grains, um, and of course, whole foods, non-GMO foods, organic foods, much better. You're just fighting less toxins. How do your joints feel? Do your joints feel achy? Do they feel a little stiff? Do you have to stretch them out before you work out or do they feel nice and lubricated, easy? You don't even notice they're there. That's a good indicator of your health and vitality. Check out your body fat. Are you holding more water? Now, the body knows the best solution for pollution is dilution. So when you put something in that pollutes your body, it adds toxins to your body, the toxic load, your body will then retain water to dilute that toxin. If you've ever had a, gone to a poison clinic or been around doctors who did poisoning, the very first thing they do when they feel somebody is poisoned is get them to drink a lot of fluid or put an IV in and flood their body with fluids. Because a poison that is concentrated will damage tissues right away. A poison that is dispersed in a lot of liquid has less damage going to happen to it. So the best solution for pollution is dilution. Now, obviously the best solution <laughs> for pollution is just not to put the pollution in to begin with. But if you do get into that state, your body is naturally going to hold on to more water. So if you see that puffiness in your face and your eyes, if you're a little bit more swole than normal when you work out, uh, being a little puffy when you work out is, is normal because you've created some more toxins from your workout, but overness, when you get really that watery look in your muscle tissue and stuff like that, it's because your body is trying to dilute the toxic load levels. So listening to these things, start watching for these little cues in your body, then understand which are the foods I should be putting in to minimize this high anti-inflammatory foods. Um, high polyphenol rich foods, uh, whole foods, foods rich in high fiber, especially foods that have different sources of fiber, uh, like these, uh, these guys, uh, kiwis, awesome. But when you peel them, <laughs> you lose a lot of that. So go ahead and eat them with the skin on. The nutrient value soars when you're eating them in their whole food state with the skin on. Just run them on a little water and make sure they're washed off. This one's organic, so it's good and clean, but a uh, great source of vitamin C. But also those polyphenols are really rich in their skin. Remember, plants protect the outside of their skin high antioxidants, high polyphenols. These help from all the oxidation or pollutants or natural chemicals or things that are in the air that would come in contact with the fruit to protect the inside of the fruit. Well, those rich polyphenols all in the skin, those rich antioxidants do the exact same thing for our bodies. They protect our cells. They, this, no one ever peel. Don't peel potatoes. Don't peel your apples. Don't peel your kiwis leave that skin on. That's where most of the nutrition is. I was doing uh, research on uh, cactus fruit, right, for its uh, powerful antioxidant. Well, it uh, had a really rich source of what's called heat shock proteins. Heat shock proteins are the way our body adapts to stress. Well, this cactus adapts to stress better than any plant in the plant kingdom. That's why I use it in Sublock 80. It helps us adapt or regulate our own hormones better than any plant ever <laughs> I've ever seen in the marketplace. And the research bears this out. But they found that the fruit had the highest amount, the cactus fruit had the highest amount of heat shock proteins. And the skin of the fruit had the highest amount. Why? Because the plant is trying to protect its young one, trying to protect its baby so its seed can survive. So it protects it with this great shell of heat shock proteins, polyphenols, phytonutrients, antioxidants. And then why does it do it from the sun? Because the sun, because of the elements that are going to come in contact with the surface, that's where all this stuff is. So we found that the skin extract of the fruit was the biggest. So again, if you're eating cactus fruit, 
consume that skin, wash it, wash it gently, uh, but uh, and and try to get organic or at least non-sprayed if you can. But that skin is where it's at, and and unfortunately in our processed foods, we're taking off the skin, we're taking out the fiber, we're taking out the polyphenols, the chlorophyll, all these rich, amazing chemicals that are produced by the plant to protect its offspring and commit to survival so it can thrive. But it's also its gift to us. This, this apple tree gives us this apple. It makes it nice and red so we can see it. It makes it smell good so we're attracted to it. It makes it taste sweet so we eat it. Why is it doing this? So that we pick up this and then drop the seed somewhere else. Because if this apple falls right underneath the tree, the shade won't let that apple grow. So it's saying, look, I need you to help me spread my seed. Will you help me uh, grow my baby? Let my baby grow. I'll give you this lots of antioxidants and nutrients and stuff that's good for your body. It'll taste good, it'll smell good, it's attractive colors. It's, it's there to try to get our attention, to try to get us to participate in the appropriation and propagation of the plants. We can do this, we can cooperate with the plants by eating some of these amazing fruits, vegetables, greens, nuts, seeds, grains, they're all giving these things to us, loaded with these protective nutritional aspects so that our bodies can benefit from them. It's just amazing. So that's what I'm saying is, let's get away from this idea that there's a certain amount of protein. Look, you do need a, a certain amount of protein minimum requirement for survival. That's known. You need a certain amount of essential fatty acids. That's known. But if you are eating these foods that are nutrient dense, nutrient density, remember that's one of my three tenets, nutrient density, training intensity, and then consistency in your exercise and your nutrition too as well. If you stick with those three, nutrition density, exercise intensity, and consistency, being consistent with your diet and your exercise, you're going to get amazing results. Then listen to how your body feels, even your mood. How do you feel the next day? Are you getting into arguments with people? <laughs> now, that can be from sleep. It can be from dehydration, but it's also from nutrition. If your body is good nutrition, your body is going to be feeling good, man. It's going to be feeling airy. It's gonna, <laughs> you're going to feel energized. You're going to feel sleep well. You're, you know, you're going to want to be active. You're going to want to do things. And that's how you can listen to your body to say, am I putting in good stuff? How do I feel today based on what I ate yesterday? So this is how we can get into intuitive eating instead of trying to figure out some macro split that works for this person and not that person. This person is male. This person's female. This guy's a six foot five, you know, 280 pound guy. This guy's a, a five foot four, you know, person. No, it's that macro split's not going to work for everybody. Going to need different caloric intakes based on their exercise, the type of exercise, their frequency of exercise, uh, their stress levels, their sleep levels. All of those things are going to impact your thyroid, your hormones, how far along you are in your diet, how far along you are in your training. That's too much to try to figure out. If you just focus on, you know, um, micronutrient dense foods, greens, grains, whole food states, fiber rich foods, polyphenol rich foods, these things will get you to that. And then start looking at your body in the mirror. Start listening to how you feel, how you look overall, and you will see, all right, I had that yesterday and I'm feeling a little achy, a little puffy. I can feel my joints not so great. My skin looks a little, <laughs> a little crabby. And then you have a great meal. Maybe I'll do all raw day or something like that. My skin looks vibrant and supple and easy. I'm not retaining any water because I'm not carrying nutrients, uh, nutrition, no bags or dark circles under my eyes. That's how you can get that biofeedback and listening to your body and adjust your caloric load, the amount of foods that you're intaking. Remember, if you really like eating, Focus on foods that are low calorie, high nutrient density. Dark greens are great for that, nothing better. Really low in calories, really high in nutrition. Obviously, that's why I chose lentine for our protein powder. It is the most nutrient dense 
plant that we know of. So that's a great place to start the day um, is getting all that nutrition into you to help compensate for other things. Remember this chlorophyll, this polyphenols, the phytonutrients and antioxidants are all going to help. Um, so you still have to meet your minimum macros. So minimum amount of protein, there's lots of ways to calculate out that. There's lots of different people. So I'm not gonna get into that. Find out what the right amount of protein is for you based on a metric that works for your activity level and that gives you the uh, appropriate amount of calories. Try to get them into whole foods or when you need to supplement to get that nutrition level at the proper amount so that you're getting optimal nutrition, not just sufficient or survival mode because survival mode is is not where we want to be at we want to be in thrive mode right we want to be living our best lives not just getting by um uh i mean how many of you want to uh just be living paycheck to paycheck that's what we're doing when we put poor crappy foods in our body our body is living just to survive paycheck to paycheck so you don't need to do that you should be thriving you should be flourishing you should be in abundance we'll put abundance of nutrition in this and you can live that health as you are trying to reach that in your affluence or in your own prosperity uh, in in the work world so you should always then adjust your total calorie intake uh, based every day adjust it adjust your calorie intake to what you do in that day if you're working out really hard or let's say you have to miss a workout or you have an injury then lower that caloric intake you can do that by eating roughly amount of same meals same amount of uh, amount of food just look and consume lower uh lower caloric load foods foods like greens or berries um, and then if you are doing, you know, wanting to gain more size, wanting to gain more muscle or training really intensity or doing endurance style training, up that calorie load, up those healthy fats, up that protein level, that's when you can start picking out some of those foods that fit those categories. I know that's a good high protein food. I know that's a good healthy fat food like uh, nuts, walnuts or, or uh, flax seeds and, and chia and hemp or high flour <laughs> uh, for your essential fatty acids and up those essential fatty acids if your activity level is higher, if your stress levels are higher, if your intensity levels are higher. So adjust it based on it and do that on a daily basis and get in tune with that. And that's when you're going to really start feeling what it is to thrive on a nutrition level and, and experience health and performance benefits like you have not experienced before. Trust me, I went from the worst diet, using drugs and alcohol and everything like that, and to a clean diet, and the difference is amazing. My mood, I was severely depressed. I was, I was clinically depressed, suicidal depression for years, could not shake it. I changed my diet. I have not suffered a day of depression in 36 years. And that's amazing. What a gift that is by changing our nutrition. So that's what I have to say. Again, I hope you got some good information out of this. Um, uh, and again, this is what I use. This is, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm hoping that maybe some of this is valuable to you. If it's not, definitely disregard it. Uh, but Learn about your body physiology, learn how this body works, what it really needs, and try to give it that. This is your best friend, you know? This is the one human being that carries you throughout your whole life. Everything you do to it, your body will try to heal, no matter what you do to it. It is constantly forgiving. That is unconditional love your body is giving you. It is always trying to do the right thing for you. So it's about time you shared some of that mutual respect with your body, do the right thing for it. Take as much care of this body as it is doing for you. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, we'll be back with some good guests and some more breaking news on our new products that are coming out too as, uh, as soon as I get some more updated data. Some of them have been delayed because of the whole pandemic situation pushing back uh, our whole production level, but we're going to get some really cool products out to you uh, over the next six months. I'm really excited to talk about them as soon as we get close enough. 
Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this broadcast. We'll see you next time.